Thanks, All right, Craig Zager, thank you very much. And we're getting ready now for the men's 100 meter event. And this ought to be a dandy. Definitely a dandy. I think this track was made for speed. It's a Mondo surface, which is considered the fastest surface in the world. It is a fast Mondo as opposed to, I guess, a slow Mondo, Craig. It's nine millimeters thick, and that's what makes it so fast. Needless to say, you would never want to train on here because you have the shin splints of your life. But for fast times, that's it. Recognize this fellow? Oh, every once in a while. <laughs> There's Carl Lewis. He is coming back after a few dismal years at the 100 meters. Had an impressive 10-10 time this you year. You know, I dated. love the standards in the Lewis family. <laughs> dismal? Well, I have to admit. I mean, I've seen him at the top, and I've also seen him running pretty slow there. But he's looked very good at the Texas Relays, beating number one ranked U.S. John Drummond earlier this year. Oh, he's got a tough assignment against Donovan Bailey from Canada, though. Bailey, beginning in June of last year, just got better and better all season, won the world championships, the world's fastest human, and he was great indoors also, Carol. And that's tough. When a guy is on a streak like that, he's hard to beat. Earlier this outdoor season, won the Brazilian Grand Prix meet in a pretty quick 10.05. Well, Dennis Mitchell is also in there. He is the, as you take a look at Donovan Bailey in the black right there. On your screen, very large athlete, a little bit reminiscent of Ben Johnson, but he is quick to say that he is not like Mr. Johnson and was disappointed along with many Canadians back in 1988 when Ben Johnson was disqualified. He said he wants to be the one to bring pride back to Canadian sprinting. Well, he won the Brazilian Grand Prix in Rio de Janeiro two weeks ago in a time of 10.05. Lanes one and two, Henry Neal and Maurice Green, both known for their quick starts. John Drummond, the number one ranked American in lane three. Dennis Mitchell, number one in the world a couple of years ago in lane four, another American. I can't miss the camera on my way. Carl Lewis out in lane seven, so he's a little bit away from some of the action. Bailey in five. Carl in lane seven, that's where he wanted to be. Good start. In lane three, John Drummond is out quickly. It's John Drummond in lane three giving way to Dennis Mitchell. Mitchell at the tape, and Carl Lewis was there as well. He was, and I'll, I'll tell you, I've seen him close, but he closed awful hard. Now, we're at a bad angle here, and it's tough to see. This is definitely going to be one we have to wait and see a photo finish. Needless to say, 993 wind aided in awful fast time. There were a lot of men who were there at the end, Craig. Only slightly wind aided, though, and you got to say that it looked as if Carl was getting by him, but a lot of times the person coming from behind looks to be the winner. I think Mitchell held on for it, but you can see they're both happy. Great performances for both. Last year, Mitchell, a little bit of a down season with some injuries for him. As you said about your brother, not a great 100-meter year for him. He was out with the rest of the field. That made the difference. Mitchell in the green, one of the best starters in the world, was out ahead, as was Drummond in the yellow. Then came Bailey, and then came Carl Lewis with a classic Carl Lewis finish. Let's see what this tells us Ooh. as it slows down. Mitchell might have leaned a little early there, Craig. Oh, it's going to be tough. It's going to be real tough. Now, you know, Carl Craig, was standing up a little bit yes, straight at the finish line. That may have lost it for him, but there's nothing lost in this race. To run under 10 seconds at this time of year is just fabulous for both of these athletes. Well, you know, we look back to the indoor season. Donovan Bailey broke that world record in the 50 meters indoors, and we thought he was going to be the one that got the real fast time. But he did not get out of the blocks very well and possibly was a little nervous. You've got Drummond, who's a veteran. You've got Carl, who's a veteran, on either side of him. Who is the winner? Carl Lewis won it. Oh, not bad. <laughs> and is this right? The first time wind dated or no under 10 flat? No, he's had, he's had one other under uh, 10 flat since then. But I'll tell you, after watching him for years run under 10 flat year after year after year, when you don't see it all the time, you start to wonder a little bit. But the old man's back. Well, they had to go to a photo at the Kentucky Derby, and they go to a photo here at the Grand Prix. What a finish. You know, was he in lane seven at the, uh, at the Los Angeles Olympics when he had that incredible finish, flourish at the finish like this? Reminiscent of 12 years ago, Carl Lewis coming from behind. You made a good point. Donovan Bailey, a bad start, got in the race, but couldn't deliver at the end. Well, I think, you know, last year at the World Championships, a lot of the best athletes in the world were not at the top of their game. 
when you look at these athletes, they have been there time and time again. They know what they're doing. They know how to stay patient and run the race at the right time, the last 10 meters. What a wonderful men's 100-meter race, and the official results have Carl Lewis, the winner, with a time of 9.94. Mitchell, Donovan, Bailey, John Drummond is fourth. Win dated or no, Carl Lewis is a happy man. Well, the two-time NBA champion Houston Rockets are gone, but the Rocket from Houston is very much alive. Kyle, you've won so many races. You'll be 35 when the Olympics get here this summer. But what does this victory mean to you and your comeback? This is the biggest thing I've had in years, and I've put a lot of importance on this race. I haven't run 100 meters in six weeks, so I didn't have the same confidence I did uh, six weeks ago. But having a race like this today tells me I can be Olympic champion, and I feel I can. Why do you say you're in the best shape of your career at this age? Well, I'll tell you, I've worked hard at it. I made a commitment last June to work harder than I've ever worked before. I'm reaping the benefits of that. But bigger than that, everywhere I go, the crowds are strong. They believe me. They're behind me. They inspire me so much that running like this, getting the big cheers, and knowing I can come back and run well again is exciting. Michael Johnson is the 200 and 400 runner, but the fact that he's got all the attention last couple of years, has that been a motivating force for you? Well, it's been great for me because I've had to carry the burden of the sport for 15 years. And it's nice to have other great athletes like Michael come up, take some of the attention, and allow me just to do some things. You know, if I pulled out of a meet like this now, everyone says, okay, that's fine. But two years ago, it would have been a big uproar. So running well here does nothing but help me. And a race like today is very, very big for me. Well, great job. Anything you want to say to Carol? I want to say good. Thanks, Carol. Stay in shape. You can make that team, too. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Great job, Carol. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Carl and Craig, thank you. Well, if you weren't with us a while ago, this young woman's brother ran a heck of a race. We thought he had won. Let's take a look at how close this race was, Craig and Carol. We know when we saw it, we said that a lot of times the man coming from behind, that's Carl Lewis, looks as if he's gotten the victory when he hasn't. The man in green, the green machine, Dennis Mitchell, I thought had hung on, but then the official results came on. They said that it was Carl Lewis that had won. Now apparently there may be a change. Well, let's go down on the field with Craig Sager, who is with the apparent winner. <laughs> well, Verna was Carl Lewis and Dennis Mitchell at the line, and then they took a victory lap, but yours only lasted for a 200 because you went in and they announced Carl had won. Did you think you'd won? Well, I, I thought I had won the race and I had looked at it on, on the picture there when they, when they ran the replay. And I thought I had won, but I mean, you know, the pe people up in the booth, they sometimes have a different opinion. So you just have to wait a little while and see what happens. Well, the official results now, you do have the victory. Congratulations on a delayed victory. <laughs> Thank you. What about the fact that you've made all these national teams? Everyone since 1987, they talk about Carl Lewis coming back what has been your motivating force? How have you been able to stay among the elite? Well, I think my, my biggest motivation in, in terms of the United States making these Olympic teams and national teams has been simply, I don't feel when I go into a, a national championship or an Olympic trials, I don't feel that there's three guys in the United States that can beat me. And that's my attitude. Whether that happens or whether it doesn't happen, I'm going to go into the race thinking that no matter what happens, I'm going to be in the top three. And for since 1987, I mean 1988, that's been happening. The Olympic trials, are you peaking for that? Oh, yeah, I'm picking for Olympic trials. I'm, I'm right on target, if not ahead of schedule right now. And I'm very motivated, very positive, and I'm going strong. And the big green machine was there at the end. Yeah, baby, don't count the green machine out. I'm back. All right, let's go back to Vern. All right, Craig, thank you. And now the official results. Dennis Mitchell with a time of 9.93. Carl Lewis, a hundredth of a second back. Donovan Bailey, the world champion, was third. And John Drummond of TCU in the USA finishes fourth.